I got shot. It was life and death. Somebody's killed your son. I think both sides have to come together. When it comes to African American men, we only get the mug shot. No, it's abnormal. Was it really worth it? You gotta be the tough guy. Tim Jackson presents How to Kill a Black Man. Available on Amazon Prime Direct. This is the No More OGs podcast. From controversial topics to creating financial freedom, we will talk to real people about real situations, providing real solutions, no celebrity endorsements, bringing you unfiltered discussions, dope interviews, and giving you the blueprint to create the culture that you will be proud of. So kick back, turn up the volume, and let's get to it. Here's your host, yours truly, Mr. Purpose on Demand, Mr. Retired 37, Mr. Tim Jackson. Hey, what's going on? It's your man, Tim Jackson, Mr. Purpose on Demand, Mr. Retired 37. I'm your host of the No More OGs podcast. I want to thank you so much for joining us, you guys. I know it's been a minute. I'm wrapping up the documentary right now, so charge to my head, not my heart. Documentary is going to drop, and we're going to have a ton of content after that, but How to Kill a Black Man coming soon this summer, 7-7. If you watch this after that, go back and make sure you go check the documentary out. Uh, but listen... <laughs> I got somebody up in here today. Y'all know I bring y'all heavy hitters, people that don't be on that bullshit, uh, people that's just going to shoot you straight. And I met this person, another person I met through Erica Williams. Shout out yep. to my girl, E Money. What up, though? Uh, if y'all know who, she, y'all y'all hear her saying what up, though. So if you know, you know. This is somebody I met. You, you know how they say that there's always a male and a female equivalent of the same person? Like, I feel like this is the, the female version of me. Like, she just don't care about your feelings. Period. She got the biggest heart. She will help you until she can't help you no more. But when she done helping your ass, she done helping your ass. But Big I face. met her through Erica Williams. We actually met Erica up in Detroit because her market yep. is the Detroit market. And she's here in town speaking at a convention, and I'll be overseeing the real estate panel, and I had to bring her here. But without further ado, I want to present to some and introduce to others my girl, Miss Asia Denson. <laughs> what up, though? What's up, Detroit <laughs> real estate guru slash construction guru slash uh, Frenchie guru slash... <laughs> Don't piss Asia off because she will do a whole reel about you Thanks. no matter how many checks you got next to your name, Thanks. no matter where you're from. And if you're from New York, she is not fooling with you. Yeah, y'all don't uh, have no yards. <laughs> What's up, man? Welcome to Dallas, what man. Up, this your first time here? Second. I came in 18 for my sister's bachelorette party. Really? <laughs> she had it here. So you came at 18. That was 2001, 2002? No, 2018. Oh, 2018. Yeah. My bad, my bad, my bad. Okay, yeah. I'm well, like, I was in college then. And what's up? Well, you know them people from Jackson State come to Dallas to party. Oh, we got a big uh, alumni chapter. Y'all have a very, very big. huge alumni chapter. Yeah, I know a lot big. of people in y'all alumni chapter. Like, y'all got a very big yeah, group of people. Dallas, because people from Jackson State, they go to Dallas, they go to Atlanta, they go to Houston. Mm-hmm. And, and then some of them go to Nashville, right? And Charlotte. And Charlotte. It's yep. a lot of y'all in Charlotte. Charlotte deep, too. Yeah, y'all are. So come on, talk to me. Like, what's good? Like, you in the city? You gonna be on the real the real estate panel this weekend? Like, mm-hmm. what's popping, man? Like, what's like? I, I've been following you for a minute. You know, one thing I like about you is that you're very transparent, extremely authentic. And you don't really care what people Thank think you. about you. Uh, Not one bit. And in this day and age, especially on social media, like people are really they're people pleasers. They want to be liked by everybody, but you know. It seems like a year later, you know, when they, they've gotten scammed by these people, they feel some right. kind of way. And it's like, I always tell people, like, the strong always survive, the weak always, you know, die. And there's a lot of people Thanks. that come in real estate in our lane. They don't know what they be talking about. They be selling bullshit. And then we have to come and clean it up. We giving people the real shit, but they go after that trinket, and then they go lose their money, and then they want to come to us to clean it up. You know what I've learned? People don't like the truth. Mm. I don't, I don't think they like the truth. I get a lot of clients after I done told them the truth. And I think they think I'd be lying or like I'm trying to get over. I'm like, no, this is what things cost. Like 10 years ago, you could rehab a, a whole house in Detroit, probably 85 grand, fully gutted. Mm. Now you're looking at probably 185, 200. It's for materials. We're all licensed to trade. It's material. It's, it's not really material. It's the labor. Labor, yeah. Typically, your materials is only... 30 40 percent of my estimate That's the rest of that is labor and permits like i could spend i spent 10 grand on a building permit yeah how different in detroit though different it's it's real <laughs> interesting i'm not trying to shit on detroit because i eventually want to invest in detroit oh, and i'm definitely gonna do it through you but Appreciate it's different it. it's it's a i don't want to get too deep into politics but it is a democratically you know ran city which you know they tend not to be as business friendly uh you know uh like you have dallas is a democrat city but mm-hmm. it's a republican state so, like, we're very friendly towards businesses. Extremely friendly. Like, I remember during the pandemic, 
Uh, like Asia does this post every first of the month that says you could be uh, uh, collecting rent in Detroit, but you bullshitting. She does it every month on the every first month. of the month, like <laughs> clockwork, right? And so me, me and my, uh, you know, you, you, hold on real quick. Like we actually went to Detroit to look and see what the market was like. And the only thing that I didn't specifically like is that I feel like the city is really easy on squatters. It's better. It's better now? It's better because they passed a law. I don't know the law verbatim, but they did pass a law now where basically you can just call the sheriff and you can get them out. But really? sometimes you do have to go through an eviction because people, fraud deed is big in Detroit. It is. You taught me that. It's very big. Yeah. Like people will be like, oh, I got the deed. But the thing with Michigan is we'll whoever record first. So you can still record a fraud deed. You just got to prove it and then go through the process to get it removed. So that's why I tell everybody uh, close through a license. A title company. Yeah. Not your cousin. <laughs> Not your cousin. Uh, especially, and unfortunately with COVID, it really went up. Yes, it did. Because you got a lot of people passing. They didn't have their paperwork in order and stuff like that. So it really went up then. So And even out here, a lot of people prey on the elderly because yes. now you have the online system. Like with us in Dallas County, you can go online and do all your stuff. So you got an elderly person who's never been online or doesn't use the internet. And then you got somebody that knows how to scam. They can go and find out who's paid their house off. They can then go out and pretty much create fake titles, sell the properties, do all kinds of stuff with it. I blame the family. Oh, ho, ho. let's talk about that. Let me make my <laughs> lab, my real quick point about what I was saying about Detroit as it relates to like the, you know, getting the permits because the city struggles as much and you correct me if I'm wrong, like mm -hmm. it's going to cost a lot of money to do business because they have to recuperate a lot of money. Is that, is that a fact or am I just kind of reaching? It is a fact, but it's changing. Like uh, they have a lot of programs specifically for black and brown businesses. Now we have the DGC Detroit economic growth corporation. They're awesome. They have all type of free panels. I post the zooms on my page. I'm pretty sure y'all don't be watching them, but it's cool. Uh, <laughs> well, but that's I post because you're them, not twerking. True. But when I'm going off though, I get attention. Which is crazy. We, we or love, when I show my face, if I don't, sh if I don't show my face, yeah. the posts don't do good. If I show my face, the posts do numbers. Like the last couple posts I've been posting, been doing really good because I just been doing the green screen. So, so yeah, and that's that's kind of what they want us to do, like on social media. Like I try to look at some of the trends, but some of the stuff. I, what I've learned with this page is that if you clown something, people love it. And so, like when they come and watch this podcast, it's all business. But on the Instagram page, I just be on there bullshitting and clowning people, getting people to think. Mm -hmm. But we love to be entertained. And let's talk about that because you said something real deep and I'm not going to let you skate by. <laughs> you know, when we talked about the deed fraud, you said I blame the families for that. I do. Let's dig in. Okay. I blame the families because everybody has a smartphone. Everybody has Google on their phone. You can look up anything, just like you want to look up when the next J's come out. You can look up how do I prevent this, how to prevent that. The city of Detroit has so many programs for the elderly. I posted this maybe a year ago. They got this thing called the HOPE program. So the city lost a lawsuit against the residents of the city because the city of Detroit was able to prove the residents how they legally or illegally forced us out of certain neighborhoods mm -hmm. so they can gentrify, right? Mm -hmm. So the residents won. If you live in certain zip codes, if not all the See, you can get your taxes waived. How many of us going to Really? I got the taxes waived on my mama house. So as long as that property stays in my family, as long as I'm living, we don't have to pay taxes. I just have to renew it every two years. And I thought it was a bunch of BS, but, you know, I'm a doer. So I applied for it first. I still paid the taxes. When it got approved, they sent me my money back. Really? So now I got to get it reapproved again by this year or I got to pay the taxes. But I'm going to still pay them just in case. And then I just let them reimburse me. Is that for people who... Were living in the area during the lawsuit? You have to live in the area and be still living in the area. The link is in my link tree. You, you, have, a, you have a lot of stuff in your link tree. but I do got to narrow that down to where it's easier to read. I agree with that. No, I'm not even saying that because I feel like people will go through, they'll watch reels, they'll watch a lot of TikToks and a lot of bullshit they ain't got shit to do with them progressing all mm -hmm. day long and they'll go through that rabbit hole. Like, we got to start going down the rabbit hole of True. getting our shit together. And I get, I get criticized when I say that. It's like, Within the black community, specifically, when you are telling your people, like, we got to do better, it's always, mm -hmm. oh, man, stop talking down on your people. Man, give us a break. It's like, man, these motherfucking entertainers ain't giving you no break. These motherfucking rappers is telling you, get high, get drunk, fuck bitches, these kill Popeye's niggas. These Popeye's chickens commercials ain't giving these, no break. Man, these Popeye's chickens. With Big Mama and them with the sweet tea. And all their commercials in the, in the Jerry strip, Rice with the, in the, in the, uh, with the strip, biscuit, you know that the, one? In the shrimp basket, gift box thing, or whatever they're doing. So, man, miss me with that. Why, but, and it's like, and it's like, <laughs> I, I have this thing, and we can talk about this. I, I, I want to get your opinion. So mm -hmm. one of the reasons I, I even started this podcast and one of the reasons people found out about me is because I had a, a video that went viral that said there's no such thing as gentrification. 
Now, mm. I explain, you know, do I believe that there's a, a process? Of course. Being a former zoning commissioner, I understand that it takes years for people to move you out. It's a process, but we give them, we hand it over to them. And so my thing yeah. was, you know, if, if Big Mama or, or Paw Paw don't have a will, it's six or seven heirs. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not helping them on the house because we don't want to live in the hood no more. We want to go get our money and leave like Uncle Elroy did, right? Because <laughs> nobody want to live in the hood. Then when it comes time for Big Mama or Paw Paw to start like needing money, we're not helping them. So then they go get a reverse mortgage. Reverse mortgage company say, yeah, I got this bag for you. Take it. You don't even have to pay this shit back. Ain't that back on the family? I'm going there. <laughs> I'm going there. So then Mama, Paw Paw die. It takes 90 days to remediate that reverse mortgage. Like, you got 90 days to prove that you are the heir or you got to get the fuck out. And that's by that's by design because they know that it's going to take at least 120 days to probate. Mm -hmm. But they have the deed. They have the rights. So now everybody's closed down. Now it's, oh, they're ginger fried. No, you you let Big Mama House go. You let Papa House go because you didn't want to live over there. They were selling houses. I know when I went to go see you, you were showing me houses that were fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. And then you could do something to it and have it turned around for whatever I paid for times two, essentially. Mm. And now I have a brand new house, essentially, for $150,000 or $106,000. I can put on Section 8 rent out. But it's like, that's too good to be true. You know what's crazy, though? I bought houses for five, dollars $600 when the market first crashed. I, rem I remember that. Like from 2010, because that's when I started wholesaling this stuff, or 20, probably 2012 to 2015. I got these. I, I think the most I paid for house then was $600. Because back then, people owe so much on the property taxes. They don't, don't nobody want to get set out. It's embarrassing. It's emasculating. It's, un, it's unfortunate, right? So they'd be like, I just need money to move. I'd be like, how much you need? Mm. They'd be like, give me 500 I'm like, that's it? All right, cool. So meet me over here. My boy here, Mobile Notary. We're going to do this right in the alley or wherever you at. And then I'm going to go have my girl, Emma, record it down in Detroit, title of escrow. But before I do all this, I'm going to still make sure the title clean and that all you owe is back taxes. Because I'm not paying no water bill, depending on the property. That's how it gets you. That's how it gets you. Because then you show all this other stuff. But... To go back to your point, I blame the family, but I can't put it all on the family because oh, as far as like what happened with Detroit with the uh, the tax issue, mm. they deliberately raised the taxes in certain neighborhoods to deliberately force people out mm. that they knew they couldn't pay for it. So you had that happen. Then you had the big three go down with the bankruptcy and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And that's what really devastated Detroit because everybody, they mama, granddaddy, great granddaddy works at the plant. The one plant worker is 10 jobs somewhere else. That's a, uh, the tire people, the airbag people, somebody another company putting on the door panels like that one job it's, it's a lot that goes on with that mm -hmm. so when the market crashed that really devastated Detroit at the same time people are now for the first time seeing a whole check you gotta think I'm fresh out of high school I can go to the gym make a hundred grand a year easy Damn. easy a lot of people in my family did that because so now you got oh, that so you're saying because because Detroit was a plant town if you guys don't know uh, the big three is going to be the big three car makers for Chrysler, uh, and Chevy, GM. right? And GM, yeah. right? Uh, we got a GM plant here in Dallas or in Arlington. Mm -hmm. Like their entire economy was that. And mm -hmm. if you're not, you know, familiar with what happened, you know, in the, in the mid two thousands, like that whole economy collapsed. Like it literally went away overnight down right. there. And, and what you saw was an increase of people just leaving the city. I can remember a friend of mine, she's a portfolio manager. This is around the time the silver dome got sold for $400,000. Mm -hmm. And she reached out to me. She was like, Tim, we're like, this portfolio has blocks of houses with like 15 to 20 houses on it. And they're selling the entire portfolio for $200,000 mm -hmm. or for 175,000. Do you have $175,000 with cash? I'm like, no, she was like, you're missing out. And, um, a I lot think of the properties I own to this day, I got out of bundles like that from some of my investors who were selling because the city passed this, well, they re, enacted this ordinance to try to get landlords to stop leaving their houses just so abandoned. That's how the landman got back revamped and stuff like that. So they're like, okay, if you're going to own a rental property, you got to bring it back up to today's code. If you got 100 houses, that's going to cost you $5, 10000000 million. Easy. So they just start unloading. So one of my clients was like, hey, I got a house by you. Do you want it? And I was like, let me go look at it. So I asked this man like 10 times, like, are you sure you want to sell this? Because I used to work on the highway as a highway engineer, so I seen the future city plan to like 2030, 2050. So I, that's whoa, how I know whoa, where whoa. to invest. No, no, no. You're not going to go. You're not going <laughs> to stop on that sentence. You said you used to see the future. What? So Detroit has this thing called Detroit Future City Project. And then I used to work on the highway as a highway engineer. So I was the usher, you know, my black and white uniform <laughs> at the event. The lady at the firm I work for, she's like, hey, I need you to help. This is like 07. 
Yeah. Oh six, oh eight. And I was like, all right, so I'm in this meeting paying attention, but it don't register what that meeting was about to twenty twelve when I got into investing. It's city planning. And what and see and I And I used to work for Simcot, which is a Southeastern Michigan Council of Governors, and they're the urban planners for the city. So I seen a lot of stuff that didn't register to me until I started investing, then I started putting two and two together. Mind you, I'm still a highway engineer. They got us uh redoing all the curb and gutters, gutters, the handicap ramps, we paving and we paving in hoods. We paving over here? We putting a handicap ramp over here. Y'all ain't never care about my black ass on no bike getting hit as a kid mm, on the North End, on Oakland and West Minister. Time, but now y'all want us to put a bike lane over here. So I was like, hmm. We don't ride bikes like that. <laughs> hmm. And then after that, I started noticing after that, they started tearing down houses in certain areas. These houses have been sitting detapulated probably since 98, 99. All of a sudden, we tearing we them had, down. We had a, it was called Operation Knockdown. Mm -hmm. Here in Dallas, if you owned an old dilapidated house that was in a certain zip code, which typically fell in the hood, you know, in the areas where, you know, black and brown people lived, mm -hmm. um, you know, south of Interstate 30, which is our divider here in Dallas. Dallas is a very segregated city. A lot of people don't know Detroit, that. very segregated. Extremely segregated. So if your uh, house fell in that zip code, they would tear your house down for free. Like, they, the but city. Who, but who still kept the land? You could keep the land, but... Did they put a lien on the land after they tore it down? Could Detroit do that? They, so he's, so what happens is, and, and you know the game, once they tear your house down, you have to upkeep that land. Upkeep on that land, a lot of people just completely forget about it. When people start dumping on that land, those are fines. And mm -hmm. what happens is if you get your house tore down, if you don't know how to upkeep the land, if you're in the hood, people going to just start dumping trash on your stuff. The grass is going to overgrow. And that's what was happening. A lot of people were neglecting these properties. So now they become a part of the land bank. They're selling them for $5,000 a piece. Mm -hmm. and in most cases, like literally it only costs $5,000. But the stipulation was you had to be a builder or someone who's done a, a, a construction project before. So that's how they were keeping certain people out of it. It was so mm -hmm. much. It, it was so simple, but we made it hard because we didn't follow the process. And I'm telling people like, yo, this is the process. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. I don't want to live over there anyway. Okay. Well then don't scream that the neighborhood's being gentrified when you don't want to live over here. I'm not telling you I, to move I see over both here. sides of the gentrification. I see, I do blame the families, but it's also, it ain't just on the families either. I can't, I can't just put it on them because like what happened with Detroit, they, they forcibly put people out. That's how they lost that lawsuit. And now yeah. people got the taxes. They also got another program where if you get food stamps, bridge card, disability, your water bill ain't going to be more than $65. But, but the people don't want to fill out the paperwork. Why? Because of pride or what? I don't know what it is, but I post the information. A lot of people DM me like, Asia, thank you, because now my word to be this. I'm like, long, at least somebody listening. Damn. You, you know what, man? <laughs> um, we, we, we're the party society. We're the turn up. We celebrate some every weekend. Like, we don't, we don't, we're some of the smartest people in the world. But right. when it comes to doing what we need to do to gain and build wealth, it's, it's always a yeah, but, or let me pray about it. And I'm like, yo, like, what? Or <laughs> just a let me see. You do it. Others do it. Yeah, yeah. And then She's I, touching the inside of her hand. Yes. Ah! <laughs> when I see them do it, yeah. then, oh, it's true. So, let, let, damn, well, you said you, I'm throwing up the oops, man, or you throwing up the oops to me. So, let's talk about that because, you know, I have this thing with the culture. That's what No More OGs is all about. Like, mm -hmm. the spelling, this bullshit-ass culture that, you know, this get high, get drunk, fuck bitches, kill nigga culture is the foundation where... <laughs> fuck hoes get money. Yeah, fuck hoes get money, which is funny because, you know what? I like rap music. I love, love it. rap. It's entertainment. It's just like a mafia movie or a murder mystery. Like, I love it. I remember when I first met met Asia, like, I swear we had the same playlist. Like, she put on her shit, and I'm just like, oh, you listen to Money Back Hill, too? You know, so like, we yeah, just ride in the street. Off. I ain't never read if, if I did, cut my legs off, right? <laughs> so that's entertainment. That's okay, but we make it our life. And so what happens is when a Tim or Asia comes along and says, yo, we can do this, they question us. Mm -hmm. But if somebody's coming along scamming that don't look like us or somebody that's, I always tell people the easiest way to scam our people is to pull up in a new car. Facts. You know, like pull up in a, a business. true. Because when I had my GMC terrain, I had a 2010, a 2012, and a 2014. Well, I got business, but when I got that goddamn big black Ram, I started getting more contracts. It's crazy, though, but because I, I didn't really start getting black clients for real to probably 2018, 2019. They had to research you. They had to. They yeah. had to see who you were, even though you were one of them. And and that's that's one of the things that I, I struggled with in the beginning. It was like I felt like clients that weren't black, they never questioned anything I was doing. Nope. They were like, "Oh, you're a resource. Uh, you know how to do this. Help me do it. Oh, I'm gonna pay you. Oh, no, I'm not gonna and make them dime you. And they pay you in full. And then when <laughs> I was, I would literally put on free events for my people. Like, yo, they need to come out here. Hey, this is happening. I don't know why I want to live over there. And it's just like, how, can we, are we going to ever be able to change that age? Or is but, it going to be too late? 
I think it's gonna be too late. I see Detroit being too late. We not we. They said we might not be the blackest city. No, we've been the blackest city in America for 60, 50, years, 50, 50 years. 60 years. Mm-hmm. They said it might be Memphis now, because a lot of us are. I understand why a lot of black people are leaving Detroit because of the schools. The school is the last thing to get fixed. Once they fix DPS, which is Detroit Public School System, it's a wrap and you will not be able to afford to come back. I see it. The average rent in Detroit right now $1,500. That's crazy. Rent used to be $600 for a three-bedroom, one-bath uh, brick house with a two-car garage in the back. And we talking 2017, 2018? That's let's, not that long ago. Let's, let's park. park. <laughs> Too fast? No. I'm gonna. I'm, I, it, you know what? It's always good to have people on here that regurgitate the shit that I say. But we've never had a conversation. Like gotcha. We've never talked about this shit. Yeah. You know, if you look at the city of Dallas, anyone who's from Dallas, the city of Dallas, Dallas Independent School District went through a total revamping because we lost Toyota. You know, Toyota moved to the area, but they moved hmm. to Plano, I believe it was. Uh, we lost a few other major businesses, like a lot of businesses operate out of Dallas, mm-hmm. but none of them are putting their headquarters in the city of Dallas because of the schools. So our schools completely went through a revamping process where they start renaming schools. They start redesignating schools. Some of the hood schools start turning into like uh, what you call like uh, magnet schools where you have to apply to get in and they specialize in STEM or law. Mm -hmm. And it's like literally the schools that we grew up thinking was the hooded schools in the cities are now like STEM schools. They're now, Mm -hmm. you know, pre-law schools or pre-college schools. And now you're starting to see that business economy come to Dallas more. And the way you can tell if your city's about to change is when they start revamping that school district because that's what businesses care that's, about. So the, our school system went through a bankruptcy. We out of that. I knew the schools was about to change. Uh, this might have been 2012, 2013. It was a big billboard on Woodward and Warren on top of the uh, Chase building. You're from Detroit. You know what building I'm talking about by Wayne State. It said, welcome to the new DPS. It had a white kid with a uh, suit on, an Asian kid, and uh, I forgot the other one, but it wasn't no black, no brown. Mm. Black Detroit was on the news like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, black Detroit don't play. Like, what is y'all doing? Yeah, I got like, a lot of pride. no, th- what what is this? Mm. They had another big issue. Uh, welcome to the new downtown Detroit. It was a big uh advertisement on a big building downtown by the uh in Cadillac Square somewhere, and it had a new restaurant on there. It had all white people sitting down. It had black people serving the white people. Mm. Black like Detroit, the old, Black like the Detroit old, get man. on the news again. What the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. better change this, and we better be serving and getting served. Yeah. Or y'all gonna have a, a problem. Like so Black Detroit don't play. <laughs> the older ones that that was there doing the riots and stuff. Yeah, like my yeah. mom and them, they don't play. Mm. Yeah, that you know what that happened downtown with me. And, when I lived downtown, um, me and my wife was down there. Mm. There was a building right across from our building that was getting completely renovated. They were, I, don't, I think, they finally opened it up. They turned it into like half condos, half hotel, and some shopping. Mm-hmm. And as you walk, you know how you walk around a building downtown, they have like the boards, but there's this plaster on the outside, a little plywood. Mm-hmm. It was just pictures of people just frolicking, having a gay old time, frolicking. right? Frolicking, <laughs> shopping. I think somebody was skipping. It was not black. skipping. It was, you know how they do when they skip. Right. It wasn't a black person on that poster. Same thing with the school district. You would see like posters of the school district and there were no black boys specifically on the school district. Mm. But then when you went to the website, when you clicked on the disciplinary page, that's where the black boy was. Oh, I, no. I reached out to my connect edition was like, what the fuck is this shit yeah, right here? Yeah, that's some whole shit. Like, literally, it was like a white boy, uh, a black girl, a Hispanic girl. I think it was an Asian, another a white girl an Asian person, an Asian kid, and then that was it. And then when you went through the entire website, there was no black boys. And when you clicked on the discipline page, now they want to show it us. was a little badass little black. And I was like, Mm-mm. I felt some kind of way. I hit my, my guy up like that day and was like, what is this shit? Yeah, and they, they changed me. it. No, yeah, no. Who approved this? <laughs> but, but here's the thing. You said something about black Detroit. And I don't know if black Detroit is like black Dallas. Black Dallas is very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Very passive. You know, we only show up to march and protest shit that don't have nothing to do with our money. Mm. When it's time to talk about the money, we don't show up. We just want to party and kick it. And when you look at some of the major cities around the United States, that tends to be a theme with, with us as a people. Mm. Like, we'll show up to turn up, but we won't show up to put the money up. Um, mm, we a little bit of both. Yeah. Like, so you Which I have way more black people than us. Yeah, Detroit, black, black. Yeah, Dallas is not a black. We only make up 10% of the population. Oh, no. 
People don't know that until they come. I didn't know that either. Yeah. But yeah, we we black black. But like you got awesome groups in Detroit, like New Era Detroit, that's doing their thing. They protecting the city. They uh they got food programs, tutoring programs, gun and safety classes, all type of stuff. So that's dope. and then they have programs like teaching people about financial literacy, real estate investing, all type of stuff. So it's a lot of stuff in Detroit. I can't say Detroit for black business. They do do a lot for us, but the issue is. Is us. We don't fill out the damn paperwork. They they have contracts in the city. So let me back up. Coleman A. Young was the best mayor Detroit ever had. The first black mayor of the city. Mm-hmm. Whitey didn't like him because he was for black Detroit. Mm-hmm. He was like, all right, white man, you want to come to Detroit and get my money? You're going to hire 50, 60% black Detroiters. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, I'm going to find you a million dollars a week. That type of stuff. That's how they start hiring us and stuff like that. Y'all huge on the unions out there too, huh? Big. Yeah. We are now, I think, a right to work state, but mm-hmm. we still have unions because you got the plants. We got the plants, and it keeps them alive. Yeah. The plants is like our number one thing. So, like when the market crash, I, I gotta back up some more. So when the market, come on back. Come on <laughs> so back. look, when the market crash, right? The other reason why Detroit fell so far behind is because. People are not seeing their checks for the first time. If your base salary is forty grand a year, but you normally bringing in one, one twenty, 120, one twenty because all the OT, once they call that at all, you like, what the hell is this? Mm-hmm. But now you don't move to Growth Point, you don't move to Southfield, you don't move to Sterling Heights, you don't move to Old Park. Yeah. You don't got this big ass fancy house. You got two caddies in the driveway. You know what I'm saying? Kids going to the best of school. They going to Cranbrook. Now you're really seeing that you broke and you can't really afford. That's a private it. school. Yeah, Cranbrook is. Ain't that the, wasn't on the. Uh, what that on? Uh, that was on Eight Mile. On, on Eight Mile. Yeah, that's you a went to Cranbrook. School. That's a private school. Oh. For sure, a private school. Yeah, Clarence Some had money real school. good parents. Very good. You had a two parent house. And his parents had a real good marriage. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> But I'm like, you going to, you got your kids in these best of schools, and now you seeing your real check, and you really mm. seeing that you broke. At the same time, now your adjustable mortgage due, mm. your balloon payment. So like. You lose your job. It was just a trickle down effect. That's why Detroit got so bad, and it just became literally a ghost town in certain neighborhoods. But now, them neighborhoods, you see others walking around, jogging with their dogs and their kids and stuff like that, two, three in the morning. Like, but, you, you and, know where you at, bro? But they. But here's the thing. And I'm not, I would never promote anything happening to anyone. Like, that's not who I am. Yeah, we're nonviolent. We're very nonviolent. <laughs> we don't fool with people like that when they come to the community we in fact we only we i remember we, me and my, my ain't wife, nothing gonna happen to him though ain't nothing gonna happen to him. I, I remember when we bought this property in the hood hood mm-hmm. i'm talking about literally the day after we bought it like we went over there the next day and like somebody got killed like right across the street mm. hood hood but it's got bike lanes and it has a new hospital right next to it oh it's, it's coming and it's walking distance to the train right mm-hmm. and I never forget seeing people who weren't from that community just like starting to spring up, pop up, you know, going on jogs, walking their Labradors, mm-hmm. you know, you know what I'm talking about. Like, I ain't trying to be funny, but it is what it is. It is. And, and they never got bothered, but you know, I pull up and to, to, to do what I need to do with the house. People look at me like something wrong with me. It's just like, well, no, like, why is it that I can't teach you how to invest in your own neighborhood? Like, why is it that you have to give me, you know, as someone who looks just like you, you know, like third degree, so to speak, or you mm-hmm. don't respect what I'm doing, but if someone else is doing it, it's, it's admirable. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And I don't want this to be a beat up. Like, you know what, y'all? I'm big on accountability. Like, I'm on the record of making an entire <laughs> Keller Williams office leadership team quit because I called out some of the bullshit that was going on when it came to, Dang. you know, race, the race stuff, right? Like, literally... The entire office leadership team quit after we had a leadership meeting. So I'm on, I call out everybody. You just proved their point then. I exactly proved the point. Your point, right? And people who f- stumble up on me from a hot take on a clip be like, man, what's this nigga talking about, right? Mm-hmm. But the fact is, like, I've spent, wait for it, as I do this on every show, hundreds of thousands of dollars <laughs> helping my people build my communities. I and love it. It's like, at one point, are we going to see that? We're sitting on a gold mine in our communities. Our communities have had highways run through them. We've had yep. our property devalued. But what happens is when we get a little money, we turn into Uncle Elroy and we get the fuck out of there. I say we because I did it. And then what I realize is once you get out there, once too many of us get out there, they start moving back to the city that we left. So Detroit is going through a reverse migration. We leaving, they coming. Because you can't get a Detroit the big ass houses we got in Detroit that's brick and beautiful and solid, you can't get really nowhere else for real. And if you do, you're going to pay a very, very penny. So you got 
the kids of my era who parents are getting elder and retired, they the ones, and the young ones, they moving back to the city, and we're moving out. A lot of us is moving out because of the schools. I get it. But that's that's going to change. Like, it's going to change. Like, I've been investing in Brightmo. Brightmo is the hoodest of the hoods in the city of Detroit. You drive through there, you're going to see some deer, some raccoons, some possums. You're going to think you in the jungle. Some dump. black squirrels. Yes, we got no, black I, squirrels. No, wait, 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 <laughs> so I had never seen a black squirrel in my life. I hear they got them in D.C. as well. Oh, I don't know. I know Detroit guys. All them. I Chicago know, might have them. I never seen one in Chicago. I was Asia was taking me on a tour of the city, and I said, "Is that a squirrel?" And it, I mean, I said, "This city so black. The damn squirrels, black yeah, cub." And they eat food, food. Like I remember one when the garbage can got some pizza was in the driveway just chilling. Like they don't eat berries and nuts. They eat food. I wanna like I wanna as like a like you know I don't know if it would throw off the ecosystem, but like catch a bunch of them and just bring them out here. You know what I'm saying? Like, what they it survive? Might, we got black ones, uh, black and gray ones, all gray ones, the brown ones. I've never but seen a black There's a lot of black ones, though. I want to catch a handful of them and just, like, put them in South Dallas. And just... If they let you catch them, them things is, mm, <laughs> there's some Negro squirrels. So, so let, let's, <laughs> let's talk about the solution. Because one of the reasons that I, I really rock with you is because you're always posting the solution. Facts. You're, you're always posting. You, you, you have a big heart. So you're going to get out there and, and let people know that they on that bullshit. True. <laughs> Under the same token, after you let people know they're on their bullshit, you tell them exactly what they need to do to get off the bullshit. Mm -hmm. And then you'll post a link. You'll do a webinar. You do these webinars. It seems like you go live at, at least once a week mm -hmm. from both of your pages. And I used to think that you were shadow banned. I was. I'm going to tell you why I don't think you were. Okay. I'm going to tell you why. Because the way the algorithm works is that we watch what the fuck we want to watch. So when I found you, I went and watched like all of your videos, mm -hmm. literally to the point, and I didn't even have to sit you as a favorite, literally to the point to where every time you posted, I saw you. Think about it. As you watch your algorithm, when you leave here, if you watch this now, go to TikTok, go to Facebook, go to Instagram, and go scroll through. You're going to see the same, you're going to see four variations of what you watch. With me, it's comedy videos. Then I done got hooked on this Gordon Ramsay shit, like how to cook a perfect steak. Uh, I get hooked on the funny, you know, kid videos, and then it's economic shit, and then it's an ad. It's the algorithm. I think it's that and that because they kept giving me the community standards thing, violation people. Well, you was cussing motherfuckers out though. I mean, true, but why you bothering me? I'm over here in my own little bubble, minding my own little Detroit business. No, Asia, you you don't was, come at you me. You was starting some shit too. Sometimes, sometimes you you went in and knocked the stick off their shoulder first. I don't recall. I definitely recall sometimes <laughs> where a person rubbed you the wrong way and it was fucking for into my an bubble. entire day. That's coming to my bubble. Mind, I'm I think one time business. you started a video and another thing. Because <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. You forgot what you was going to say. I'm like, this petty Negro did a whole video and started off with and another thing. And so if you had been I am petty. Extremely. Extreme. Guilty. But, but 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 what I said is like you will you'll tell people, hey, this is bullshit, but this is what you do. Like you do your uh Detroit, uh you post something like DC some every month you post like this thing that the city does. What what's that like? So D that every Monday they have a free Zoom meeting. And what's crazy, on these Zooms, they tell you where they about to invest in next. Mm -hmm. They tell you where they about to gentrify next, technically. They uh talk about redevelop. I'm sorry. Redevelop. redevelop. There's no such thing as yeah. They're gonna redevelop in these neighborhoods. They're going to also talk about these different business loans and grants that they can offer the city, free tech classes they offer, because a lot of people, unfortunately, are not tech savvy. They wow. have free uh, one program where they were doing uh, your, your website for you. First five pages free. How many of us apply for it? Do you think it's a lack of trust or do you think it's just? I think it's, I think it's lazy. We lazy. We oh, you can't. No, 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 no. You can't say that. That's a trope. Okay. We're. Uh, what's another word for that? That's a trope. And they're going to call us coons. Even though we love our people to death and we invest. Uh, I don't care what you call them. You I'm just, but I'm just, yeah, you know, I'm just you know, putting the rules out there because yeah. you can't, you can't, you know, one of the hardest things I've learned, I said in my thirties, I spent most of my time trying to convince the wrong people to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And I followed every, oh, I got the word too relaxed. That's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. We can't say lazy though. <laughs> too relaxed. We're too relaxed. <laughs> Remember that if a person doesn't like to get up and do what the fuck they need to do to get their shit together, they're not lazy. They're just too relaxed. And they must not like money. They love the image. They love the the idea of being rich. We hustle for the cherry on top and not the cake. So the mm. idea 
of looking like we have the shit is more important than actually having the shit. I used to believe that, believe that, that people who ha- had all the jewelry on was rich until I got around real wealthy, rich people that didn't look like me and they look homeless. They buy clothes from Target and get them mm-hmm. done at the cleaners. Now they're going to have them on the watch now. Every single time. They're going to have on some nice cufflinks. Every single time. But he or she is going to step out of a Honda. They, they might have one nice family car for when they go out, out. Mm-hmm. But they everyday driver going to be a Prius, a old little beater, a Chevy well, Nova why, or something. And you come from you come from the home of flexing. All of my pot, I got a lot of partners <laughs> from Detroit. Uh, a lot of partners. And everything that I, one thing I can say about all my partners, they always got a badass car. Like, y'all come from the home of flexing when it comes but to cars. But cars is cheaper for us, though. It is cheaper for y'all, but it's still a lifestyle. Also true. And we like nice shit. Y'all do. So so let's talk about that because, you know, I uh, I once had a cousin um, mm-hmm. who came into a lump sum of money, like 30 or 40 grand in the 90s. Now, that's a lot of money in the 90s. That's a lot of money right now. That's a lot of money right now. But that That's nigga, a three-bedroom house. But that was like $150,000 in the 90s. Mm. And they went out and bought two Cadillacs. Of course they did. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, and went on a shopping spree. <laughs> and it was gone. That shit was, what's the movie, Gone in 60 Seconds? They got the money like at the beginning of the summer, and by the end of the summer, by Labor Day, it was gone. Okay, so let me ask you this. With the reparations thing, mm. I don't understand why they won't give it to it, because that's exactly what's going to happen with 70% of us. Well, I'm not going to do that with mine. Well, so, so on the topic of that, run me my check. You know, let me decide what I'm going to do with that money, y'all. Period. On the if, topic of that. If I do want to blow it, give give it to me to blow. Give it to me to blow. So yeah. well, first things first, run me my check. I'll never not say that. Um, I think that if you give a lump sum of money to anybody, they're going to fuck it off. I think that because we're, we have proximity to our people and we see the bullshit from our people all the time, mm-hmm. that we're going to automatically assume the bullshit. But one thing I've learned getting around other people, as you just mentioned, is that they have a lot of people in their family on that bullshit, too. They just do a better job of tucking them away. Yeah. Like, like, seriously, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they tuck them away and you don't really hear about them and you see them as the idea of success. Uh, run me my check. Um, but what, hap- what happens though? Like when I, like if I, if you and I get a check for $200,000 for reparation, like, like, what do you do with it? What you gonna do with your shit? I'm gonna renovate a uh, big red on Cadillac and Kirchville. You still talking about big red, huh? You yeah. showed me big red, didn't you? Yeah. I'm gonna put that That's money the firehouse, in the right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. I'm gonna put it in there. Whenever my house on bad for sale, Lord, it ain't sold yet. Yeah. And that's the other side people don't tell you. Like, I talk about both sides. I talk about my goods and my bad. Some wins, some losses. You show a lot of mistakes. Yeah, I show a lot of mistakes because I want people to learn from mine. Just like I would hope they would. But So do you feel like I that's why that's a lot of people are intimidated by you? Because I see a lot of times. You think people are intimidated by me? I definitely think that people are intimidated by you because I, cause I, it's the same type of intimidation I get. So like, I never thought that. I, I, they are. And I'm going to tell you why. When you have people that are like, if I show you my inbox and y'all know who y'all are, cause y'all be hitting me up. <laughs> Whenever I go speak in different cities, I'm on a 10 city tour. Now the people that show up, they say, Tim, you're the one of the few people on social media that actually tell us the truth. And what happens is, is I feel like a lot of people that have these bigger platforms, like some people that I know will go on a bigger platform, but they won't say my name or they won't throw the oop. Whereas when I get in front of a bigger platform, like I have like the event that's going on this weekend. Shout out to you for that. My that, dog. that was a for my dog. Oh, you some Waffle dog. House, bro. You can get two waffles. Oh, I hate Waffle House, but I'll eat it for you. <laughs> Whataburger? I fuck some Whataburger. Because I love that water tea. Okay, well, then let's do it. All right. So, like, like <laughs> what, what happened was there's a big event coming to Dallas, a huge expo, and I was able to help bring uh, work with the organizers to find a venue, and it, it's taking place this weekend. And the organizers said, hey, we want to have a real estate panel. Do you know anyone? I literally called all of my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, People that are really, really doing this shit in real estate, but ain't looking for people to like take pictures of them or they're not looking for the validation. They want to show you exactly what it is. And it's like, I know people that get a chance to go on some of these bigger shows and these bigger platforms and them niggas ain't saying they would never throw my name out there as an oop because they understand that once I get in front of them, once I get in front of your audience, it's a wrap. Like your audience is going to fuck with me. That's not like jealousy. You think so? Or more like an en- envious thing because you're going to take away their shine. But, but I like being in the background. Don't say it one more I mean, time. I think it's more of a jealousy. No, or no, no. The, the second part. You like, oh, it's going to take away their shine? The third part. I like being in the background. Oh, I like being in the background. And I don't think people understand. Like, I don't give a fuck about this social media shit. Because I know what I'm doing. And there ain't shit you can say to me that's going to validate or change what I'm doing. I know me. My, as long as my family support me, I can give a fuck. Well, anybody got to say Because my family had my back <laughs> when I was broke and losing my condo. But here's the thing, though, Asia. If Tim Jackson moved to Detroit mm-hmm. and Tim Jackson started renovating houses, 
I'm not going to take any money out of Asia Denson's pocket because Asia Denson has her own shit going. And no matter how good I am, Asia going to always be able to eat. And Asia is going to probably be the person, will be the person that I call that's going to set me it's up. It's too much money out here. And it's no competition. It's too much money out here. <laughs> I don't think people get that. It's too much money out here. It's too much money out here. <laughs> like, Say one more time. It's too much money out here. Like, I don't think people understand that. So what happens is I feel like that when people see the authenticity, mm -hmm. it intimidates them because they understand that eventually people are going to start waking up and they're going to start calling out your shit and they're going to start seeing the inconsistencies because, you know, it's only so long you can bullshit people. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? And Especially it's like, since all this pandemic money gone or it's, it's almost gone. It's only so long <laughs> you can bullshit people. And what happens is you see these people come, and they ain't shit nobody. This ain't no kicking nobody in the ass contest. But you'll see these people pop up and they're a guru and then two or three years later you don't see them anymore because they on their ass. But I don't look at myself as a guru. I don't ever call me no guru. But people call me a guru. They be like, hey, you the risk. I think I called you one. You you called but me one. I was one. fucking with you at the beginning. My uh my personal trainer, he called me one when he introduced introduced me to people at gyms. Oh, this Asia, she our real estate guru. I be like, I just think I'm a person who learned some shit and applied it and did it. And just kept doing it. Even you forgot one component of despite, that. Despite despite the fact that I've had losses and stuff, I never gave up. You left off one component. You teach people how to do it. Oh, yeah, I do teach people. You do. And what happens is, like, most people, they're not teaching people. You know, they're creating some bullshit. They're charging people. And then when you buy, it's a bunch of shit that you can go to YouTube and find. And then when you start getting out there doing it yourself, a lot of people invest their last dollars. I always tell people that fuck yeah. me. Don't invest your last. Because mm -hmm. you flipping that first house, every fucking thing you can imagine going to go wrong. The people I learned from the wholesale from, mm -hmm. uh, I forgot the name, it was a white group. Uh, the fortune, the fortune builders. Mm -hmm. I went to that, learn, and then I had no buy a separate program after that. And I remember telling the guy, like, "Look, I'm going through a foreclosure, stuff like that. Like, this is the height of foreclosure in Detroit." And he was like, "Don't invest your last one." He like, "I will never take that from you." And I respected that because he could have and he didn't. And like, I tell people the same thing. I had a client reach out to me and they was like, uh, "Would you recommend that I put up my house to uh, come invest in Detroit?" I was like, "The house you lay your head at, you and your wife and your three kids." He was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Don't you do that stupid you shit." Do that stupid shit. I was like, you got some rentals you can put up? Put them niggas up. They can leave. <laughs> you don't put your shit up. What is wrong with you? So why do we teach that? Why? Like, I be watching people. I always teach people about the platinum card. Mm -hmm. American Express platinum. You got one? Oh, I got I got two platinums and I got a Delta Reserve. Okay. Yeah, you're a Delta Club person. <laughs> so so let's talk platinum cards. Okay. Because you use your platinum card like I use my platinum card. Uh, thank you, Amex, for funding this trip. Bruh. <laughs> I'm on my seventh trip, and I've only paid. For, I, my first five trips. I use on my, my points. Bruh. That and my American. See, we got American Airlines here in Dallas. So, yeah. you know, you got y'all got Detroit. As I mean, Detroit is Delta pretty much, right? That's yeah, we got Delta, but we got the old airport, which hosts everybody else. Yeah. So this is American Airlines Hub. So I have my Amer I mean my American Airlines Club. I go into the Admirals Club. I got that too, but I don't use it. You don't it. use it. You you use them I like use I use Delta. Delta. Yeah. So the point I'm making is this. On those platinum cards, I used to see people posting their platinum cards. And they be, oh, I got this platinum card. And it's like, okay, you can afford the six hundred ninety five dollar membership, but post your statement. Post that statement, player. Because what people don't understand is that the first two or three years, depending on how much money you spend, all that money is due. If you charge $1,000, they want $1,000 at the end of that month. Mine is not like that. Mine, because you I really could, use it. Yeah, I could just pay on it. Because you use it. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. You know why. that's a feature, right? The, oh, the thank minimum, you, the, the minimum payment <laughs> is after you spend over like $100,000, I believe. Don't I, quote I'm me definitely. on that, but I know you cannot make a minimum payment the first couple of months because they want you to pay it to zero. After you've established a relationship with them, then they give you a minimum payment. Oh, I've been with Amex since 2012. Yeah. Like, you have to be with them for years before they offer you a minimum payment. Oh, yeah. I got minimum payment. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. like, I be one, I be petty. So, one day, I just finally got tired of seeing people post that Amex card. And I was just like, I just made a post of, like, literally all my bills that I paid for, like, the last six months. Like, one of my bills was, like, 20 grand. I'm like, no, post your statement. Mm -hmm. But we get so caught up in the glitz and the glamour of having a fucking... A platinum man makes. But are you using those cards correctly? Because I've bought houses on my credit, not on the credit card itself, but I've done balance transfers. Oh my god! I didn't know none of. So look, y'all pay attention because I teach. I say this all the time look, when I speak. That's my first uh, flip I did back in eighteen. I paid five grand for the house. They wanted twenty five. I was like, I got five. Yeah. He was like, you got eight. <laughs> I got five. So he took the five. I was like, cool. Give me 
three days. So uh, Chase had sent me a thing. Like, they sent me, like, a stack of checks, like, actual checks. And I was like, checks? And on the, uh, the letter, it said, you can use these checks to pay anything, including yourself. So I was like, myself? This is construction service, twenty five thousand. Wrote that boy to myself, put it in the bank, went and bought that house, and that's how I rehabbed it. Then I needed zero percent interest for like fifteen months. I'm eighteen, gonna... and then I needed another fifteen. Y'all, this ain't coach because I always <laughs> tell this story when I go speak. Go ahead. But look, I needed another fifteen to finish the house because I only had twenty five. So uh, I went to Instagram. I was like, Hey, who want to let me borrow fifteen thousand dollars at ten percent interest? Six people DM me. I was like, Holy shit. And so I was like, well, I know him personally. I ain't going to take money. I don't want to do business with friends because if it go bad, whatever. So my boy out of Cali, he had just took the equity out of his house. He had got like $1.2 million from in San Francisco, mm. moved to Detroit, bought 50 houses in the tax auction. Damn. Section 8, all them hoes, he was getting ten fifty to eleven fifty a month because he was doing out cold rehab. I was like, why you putting granite over here? He like, because I want the most bang for my buck, which he did. So he got like 30 in Detroit and 20 in Pontiac. And he... Fixed one up, lived in that one, mm. and Section 8, the other 49. And then rented out the house in San Francisco yeah, to pay what, what the mortgage back. I always back. talk about <laughs> I always talk about Section 8. Section 8 is your I love friend. Section 8. You get that money every month on the second of the month. While everybody's complaining about nobody's paying them during the pandemic, mm -hmm. the government's cutting you a check every month on the second of the month. We're doing a Birdman hand rub with our Section 8 mm -hmm. tenants every month. Thank you. So I, I, mean, I this love is, that. Only thing with Section 8 in Detroit, they still be sending me checks. I'm like, not Section 8. Why am I they still take two, well, They take two or three. They take us nine, 60 to 90 days to pay your first, uh, give you your first payment out here. That's fine, but you give me a green check, bro. <laughs> it's 2022 20, at the time. Y'all sending me checks. Is it through the city of Detroit? No, this through the city of Southfield. So, so that's how it is out here. Like every city has its own Section 8 municipality. Yeah. So I go, I like to go through the county because the county covers everyone and their electronic. Yeah, but there's other programs in Detroit that's similar to Section Eight. You got the uh, Mama Baby program uh, that pay like if like a battered family or something like that. They pay mm. you stuff. Veterans got programs like it's all type of ways to get rid of Detroit and not deal with like regular tenants. But I feel bad for the regular tenant because after the pandemic, that scared a lot of the smaller landlords into mm. renting to non Section Eight tenants. Ain't it funny how the pandemic literally changed the way people thought about Section Eight? Yeah, because they're the like, only ones getting paid. Yeah, I used to like tell people, you can put the house on session. I don't want to deal with them. I'm like, with them, like, it's just people who just need help. And most of the mm, prejudice, they, ain't it? Them? Them. It was, <laughs> it was us saying it. Right, yeah. right. So, like, like my, one of my best tenants I've ever had in my 11 years of being a landlord was a Section 8 tenant. My Section 8 tenant on point. Like, she, Apple pays me her portion, and then they send me the rest. But I think she, I think she going to renew because I think I'm the first. Like, anything go wrong, I fix it. Like, I don't care. That's because you're a good landlord. And I want my money. You want your money. And then she has a small baby, so I'm being considerate of that and yeah. stuff like that, too. And I told her, I was like, you get anything in here that you didn't invite, let yeah. me know. <laughs> <laughs> my boy she got his own bug company. So, so let's talk about that, too. They gonna come spray. <laughs> no, let's segue in there. Because, you you know, one thing I, I fool with you about is you're extremely resourceful. Like, I met your crew that was working on your one house. Mm -hmm. um, the, the black Hispanic dude. Oh, uh, Johnny, yeah. that's my guy. And then, but it's like you have a guy or a girl for everything, and it's really hard. Like, I think the hardest thing in real estate investing is building that team, yeah, because people try to nickel and dime you so much. Uh, and a lot of people that are new investors come in and they mistreat their contractors that it's just it's really rare to see an investor stick with the same crew. You know how that happened? Tell me, I have a very good rep in Detroit because I pay. I pay on time. Well, most, you overpay. most of the time I pay on time because if, the, if the, I ain't got paid, I can't pay y'all. But if I got the money, I will go on the front and just hold it. I pay. I pay well. Yeah, you overpay. I don't argue your price. If I can pay it, I can pay because I feel like how dare you argue my price. So I feel the same way. So it's all good. But I need you to do your job. And then I don't hound them. A lot of women that's in construction and in real estate, they do the most. And I think it's really a respect thing. Like, they respect me. I respect them. Like, we have a great working relationship. I kept the, I tried to expand, and every time I try to get new crews, it, it don't work. Why not? Uh, one person, uh, I was a uh, licensed builder on their company. He went downtown to pull permits under my license, and I didn't know, so he had to go. Uh, then he walked off my job. He didn't pay his crew, so I paid his crew, so they offended, so now they crew fuck with me. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> I do you're right. Kinda like a, a, you I know, do right by people, though. You, yeah, you kind of like a whole, you know, dude. You know, you know what I'm I saying? Am, you but be, that's my daddy and my granddaddy. That's your fault. daddy and your granddaddy fault. Yeah, you talk about that. You talked about that before. But like, yeah. here's the thing, though, because. I say that because I think that 
you're a woman in a heavily male dominated industry. And you, like you used I mean, even your previous job, you were a freaking road engineer. Mm -hmm. Like I'm willing to bet like you were for every hundred men, there's probably for every 200 men, there's probably one woman. Would it was say? probably seven of us. Three of us was black. Mm. One was brown. The rest was white. In a completely male dominated field. Yeah. So, so I loved it though. Like my first day on the job, I cut. I got cussed out so bad. Like I ain't even do nothing. I'm like, what? The, what the fuck? That's like how we. That's how we. I'm talk like, here. what the hell? Like he just went off. I guess he was having a bad pussy ass short man complex. <laughs> so then the next day, I told my boss. He was like, look, age. I ain't trying to be disrespectful. I understand you a black woman. This is old white man. He was like, look, this our field. You came into our field, mm. so you need to grab your nuts, cuss his ass out. And I see you on the other side of the lodge. I was like, so it's okay for me to cuss him out? He was like, yeah. I was like, say less. Old boy came with the same shit, went off on this dude. We ain't had no more problems. He never fucked with you again. Never fucked with me again. Nobody on the site fucked with me no more because I went off. Like, I went to the pits of Which hell. Which you like, how tall are you, 5'11"? I'm 5'10". You not sure. <laughs> right. That'd be crazy when people meet me. They be like, dang you, because I got a kid voice. I got a baby face. You got a kid yeah. voice. <laughs> you sound like, you know, you got the Michelle A going on. Right. Unless I'm mad, then my voice changes. But Well, you slow down. You slow down when you get mad. I slow down. Yeah, and you know, and I'm slow calm. Is low. You know that, right? And I'm calm when I'm mad, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. But look, when people meet me and I get on my truck, they be like, I didn't realize you was that tall. They be like, damn, you tall as hell. I be like, yeah, you know, I'm a little tree. And she know where all the pizza, she know where all the food spots. Oh, yeah, you want to eat good in the city. When I tell you, we man. ate, we, I had never had Detroit-style pizza before. You got to let me know if you want to gain weight or lose weight when you well, come to the city, because that's going to determine where we going to eat. I definitely gained weight fucking with you. <laughs> For man. sure. I mean, Ramon like that, too. Every time he come to Detroit, he got to go to the turkey grill. <laughs> So we went to some break, breakfast spot. You didn't go to breakfast with us that morning. I think it was just uh, me, Erica. I think I just told y'all where to go. Yeah, you told us where to go. We hit a club. I don't know what the fuck I was doing up in this little club <laughs> right downtown. We hit this club, like Soul Food Spot, right outside of downtown. Mm -hmm. Right past the little Martin building. Mm -hmm. You know, the uh, Martin's, you know where Martin was. You know, the little yeah, when I show people that, they be like, dang, that is, that that is the same it. building. And then you took us to this pizza spot. Buddy's Pizza. Shit. It took them 40 minutes to make our pizza. It was worth every minute, though. It was worth every minute of it. And it was a hole-in-the-wall spot. Like Everybody go to the police. That's, but that's the original ones, not the ones out in, in the birds. Yeah. You know, they more fancy. But we go to that one because they got them same cast iron pizza pants. You sound, man, listen, listen, <laughs> so listen. So you know that pizza gonna slap. It's gonna slap, man. <laughs> they ain't got to grease that thing or nothing. Right. Let me let me ask you something. Um there's two more questions I want to ask you. Go ahead. I'm enjoying um, myself. First things first. You come from Detroit. Detroit is a very prideful city. When I think of prideful cities, I have my top five, right? I got mm -hmm. Detroit, <clears throat> Oakland, California. Detroit and Oakland remind me a lot of each other. If you really think about it, low key, every major black city that's by water has been gentrified or getting gentrified. Yeah. Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Um, another prideful city. Very prideful. Extremely prideful. Um, <clears throat> my fucking Chicago is extremely prideful. Mm -hmm. um, and it's extremely segregated. Like one of the most segregated cities in the nation. Detroit segregated. Yeah. yeah. Like all these black cities are segregated. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to come south of like a Memphis or something like that too. And I know you're saying Memphis is going to be like the blackest city, but they all have something in common. Mm. And I might piss some people off when I say this. Uh -oh. <clears throat> but the one thing that they all have in common is that I feel like our people in those cities aren't focused on economic survival. I feel like we've been fucked so bad in those cities mm -hmm. that we've literally just given up and just said, fuck it. Turn up. You only live once. I don't give a fuck because if I go down there, they're not going to do me right. It's bad customer service down at the city or wherever. The courts don't do me right. It's just... I, I'm, I'm fucked either way, so I might as well just live my best life. But I think if you think bad things, bad things will happen. I, I'm a firm believer in manifestations. Like, where I'm at today, I was here in my head when I was broke, and my mama told me, baby, don't worry about nothing, come home. Mm. So where I'm going to be at in 10 years, I'm already there in my head. Now I just got to get there in the physical. So I, th I think it's mental. And then I so think it's a, we... a support group. 
It talk gotta be your that. support cause, Talk about that Cause I got a lot of friends Who talk about how their family didn't support I remember when I first told my mama What I wanted to do She was like So this is how you gonna get On the front of Black Enterprise Cause I told her that Like in the 6th grade mm. And she was like Okay this is all I'ma say If you gonna do it Do it If you ain't I don't wanna hear about it That's mm. how my family roll And then once you tell them What you gonna do They gonna be on your head Like white on rice Did you do this Did you do that Did you right. do that Which It's like It's annoying But I appreciate it And like They, they had my back They was like We got you like so, so I, I you think know it, that's it really, not common. I've been hearing that because when people be telling me their story, I'd be like, "This is crazy." Like my family will never do that. To this day, my family they like, "Hey, when you getting that jet so you can come pick us up?" I'm working on it. You um, know what? <laughs> I just had this conversation today with my boy Marcus, blue collar CEO. Shout out to him. He said, "Tim," he said, "Essentially, we've kind of lived in a fairy tale." Mm. You know, um, we want things to be a certain kind of way, but. The average person that makes it out, that thing, turn my allergies up, y'all. Y'all know I got these horrible sinuses. So if you see some snot driven, I'm not editing. <laughs> Fuck it. He said, a lot of people who make it out, the Tims, the Asias, the Marcuses, the people in the, in the family that everyone calls on, there's literally no one really fucking with us or teaching us how to do this shit. We're either doing it by ourselves, and we had one or two people that wouldn't let us fail. He said, but the average person doesn't have that. No, he my said, whole family, they yes. got my back. Both both sides, like, because me and my dad's side just kind of, that relationship really just probably formed the last five to eight years, mm -hmm. but I really can blame him for a lot of stuff because my dad was a brick mason, my brother's a brick mason, my uncle, my other uncle was a, a mechanical engineer, but he was a carpenter, and my granddaddy had a really big construction company growing up, so mm -hmm. I was always around it. I, I never thought I would do this, but... I'm kind of glad. I really wish my granddad so was still here. So you saw it. Well, I've seen it. So then, how do we, how do we, how do we show this to be normal? Because <clears throat> one of the things that I've struggled with is making this shit normal. And it's like even with my mentoring group, you know, like I cuss a lot, y'all. Y'all know I don't Me mind. Me too. I don't mind wearing my mentoring shirt because we mentor for real. Um, mm -hmm. The hardest part is breaking through that barrier with the kids to show them that what we're doing is normal. Like you got to show. The, unfortunately, that's when you got to floss a little bit. You got to show the kids that you don't. I was always taught I don't have to shoot a ball or catch a ball to be able to make good money. Like in uh, the blue collar way is really the way to go. Blue collar is needed. You can be a plumber at eighteen, nineteen, making fifty to a hundred grand a year. Facts. And that's that's nationwide, no matter where you at. That and then good. once you get your five year journeyman, or if you decide to go get licensed and get a company, the ten ninety nines I send my subs. I be looking like I'm in the poorhouse. Twenty five thousand dollars and twenty. We did a job one time that was twenty two thousand dollars. Asia. Twenty one thousand dollars was digging. Mm hmm. Do you hear me? Mm hmm. Twenty one thousand dollars. I know. Was digging around the house. It was like almost three hundred dollars a foot because they have to dig a foot long and so yep. so deep. $21,000 was digging. The materials was only like a couple hundred dollars. They probably paid ten grand for that machine five years ago. They been done made that money back. Bro, $21,000 was digging. Yeah. Then I paid another plumber to do some, run a gas line for me. Was that about $3,000? Five. Mm-hmm. Five. To run a gas line from the street. With the permit? With the permit. Yeah. Because the city of Dallas don't fuck around with the permits. Detroit like they, getting like that, too. Like they ain't playing. They drive. They be driving around them neighborhoods. If they see you doing something, let me see. But you have to post your permit in the front yard in many cases. Yeah, we got to put ours in the window. Yeah. Um, he came out there in Asia. When I tell you he had that job done, he dug in like, let's say we'll call it three hours, four hours. Mm-hmm. He came out there, checked the hole. He ran that, that damn gas line. He called the inspector out there to give him a green tag. He was gone. But you know what? Somebody posted on my page the other day when I posted that land bank video and was like, this is hilarious because uh, the USB plug only costs a couple of dollars and I can buy a box of them on Amazon. I was like, but you paying for the motherfucker with the knowledge to put it in so you won't burn the house down. People so damn smart on social Stupid. media. Like, 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 like but, that's but what why? you're paying for. What's the purpose of and people I coming to your people, comments? I was like, three things I ain't gonna never cheap out on. My finishes... Because that's what matters. Y'all don't care about what's going on behind that wall. I do, but y'all don't care. HVAC and electrical, them two can kill somebody. Dead. You can blow a house up if you wire it wrong. And if you ain't got that CO2 coming out the house the right way, you're going to kill a family. And you're going to jail for murder. Yeah. <laughs> and I, restitution. <laughs> <laughs> like, that stuff is real. That shit is real, real. But I don't cheat out on it. And that, that doesn't it. have an expiration date. Nope. 
Yeah, if you did some faulty shit with a permit or without a, especially if you did it without a permit, you I put permits on all, my, and that's why I got a clause in my contract now. And if you're a contractor, listen to this. Make sure you have a clause in there that there's no like a circumvent clause because a lot of people in Detroit, especially these investors, they'll try to go around me to you to get something done for cheaper, mm. and then you fuck it up. You still want to come sue me because you used my guys and went around me. So all my subs know if anybody come to you, prove it. Make sure you got proof. I'm putting a twenty five thousand dollar lien on this house. When we get paid, we gonna split it. You gonna get twelve five, and I'm gonna get twelve five. Mm. And I, and that clause is good for five years from the date of completion, from the start until the date of completion of the contract. Then the five years start. Like I don't play. Really? If you a homeowner, you think you are gonna come in here and learn on my not on my permit? <laughs> you can do whatever you want when these yeah. when I get these green stickers. And also contractors, make sure you document everything because I go, I went to court. I'm 4 0 right now. So I'm 4 0. I'm 4 0. But I document everything. All right, Denver. right, right. You got to sweep on be them boys. Them, huh? right, be sweeping them. But no, for real, because uh, you got to, I was taught on the highway, always CYA, cover your ass. Yeah. So I film every house from start to finish. You do. I take pictures of everything. I had one client some years ago, I was like, y'all broke the window. I was like, here you go to uh, YouTube link, see the four minute and two second. That goddamn glass was broke. So we not fixing that. And that done got me out of a lot of stuff because they don't expect that from black kind. They really don't. They don't expect me to be that organized. They don't expect me to be that on point. I got organized because I ran full freeway jobs by myself when I was on the highway. So everything I learned on the highway, I brought to my company. And then I got a tech engineering degree. That's how I really started getting a lot of the out of state and uh, international investors because I was taking credit cards and checks. Mm. It's something that we don't do. <laughs> we don't do. We, I've we told cash. my barbers for years, you need to start taking the credit cards. <laughs> and if you reverse it, I'm going to prove what I did, and I'm going to get it back, and I'm putting a lien on there, and you, and I'm going to get paid before you try to sell it. You That's know how many times titles companies have called me because my lien on these people's houses? I don't play. <laughs> I don't play. I will sue because you. Because you play the game right. And, and I tell people, like, don't hire nobody you can't sue. Like, just the don't do it. The like, take both of us. Bro. The permit, and then people don't want you to put a permit to go around. I'm like, that permit protects both it protects of us. You. It protects me and you. It protects you. I, when I first got into the house flipping game, I was hiring bullshit people. Like, the one of the dudes we hired on our first flip, my first flip was a nightmare, Asia. Oh. Like, everything that could possibly go wrong went wrong. I had to talk to you about that shit off camera. Are you good? should talk about it, because I think people should know. People need to know the good and the bad. I, I, I try to pepper some shit in there from time to time, but a lot of that shit is some off camera shit. <laughs> Cause, Offering cause, uh, your subscriptions. Because, uh, you know, intelligent degree Tim didn't handle that, you know. Oh. Tim from Pleasant Grove, you know, ended up having hey, to North happen, and you got to come up out sometimes, so, too, so I feel it. And, and it, you know, it, it just was what it was, you know. Like, you know, people bring the worst out of you sometimes, and they don't yeah. go in their favor. But here's the thing. Everything that possibly could have went wrong, that went wrong. Because we, you know, for lack of better words, cut corners because we were trying to help people. You know, oh, my cousin owned this company. He can do this. And, you know, me, I have a big heart. I need to, you know, employ my people. You know, I was just really big. I was like that at first. You like that until you start getting burned. I didn't get, I didn't really get burned. It's just like, it was to the point where I don't care who can do the job, as long as you do the job right. Exactly. That's, and and, and it, got to that point. And, it, and that's how it is. And it's like, it's already not a lot of us doing certain jobs. So then it's like, if I'm spending all my time, effort, energy on one or two people who do this job just because they look like me, then then they're not doing it right, then I feel some kind of way. So I just start hiring people that was good for the job. Like I said, hey, if you can do this, if you have a license or if you have a way that I can sue you, I'm hiring. That's it. Mm -hmm. And when I would meet people that look like me, I'm like, get these types of protections and let's work together. Because if something goes wrong, I don't want it to be personal. I want to be able to recuperate what I can. And many times it just be like a, you know, a person that's not created and went on Canva and created a business card and a T-shirt. And they do good work at first, but they're not consistent. Yeah. And especially that not with us, because it's like for us, it seemed like people tend to try their own people. And this is this is what everybody I talk to my Hispanic contractors. I got a Hispanic contractor that says, Tim, I don't, I don't work with Hispanics. I'm like, what? I thought y'all work together. He said, no. He said, just like you've complained. He's he watches my shit. Said, yeah. Just like you've complained about your people doing shit. He said, that's a human nature thing. He said, you got to get out of the mindset of thinking that it's just your people. He says, all people fuck over their own people. I believe that. Yeah. And I was like, damn, he said it's familiarity. But see, the best clients I've had is the ones that don't look like me. I'm starting to get good black clients because, unfortunately, I ain't got burned by too many black contractors, so now they coming to me. And on the flip side, when I talk to white people, I talk to non-black people, they say some of their best clients are black people. I feel I like it's, I think it's just proximity. I think that we just, we go into situations with an expectation. It's kind of like, 
you know, the black business, like, you know, a person can go to a big box store and get the worst customer service, have to check they self out. Uh, I like checking myself out because I don't want to deal you are, with But you're an introvert. Yeah, I don't want to deal with people. You don't like people. I'd have my people limit for the day. Right. <laughs> um, and then they'll go to a black establishment and want the perfect customer service. And then if they don't get it, they'll get online and talk shit about it. But the places with the worst customer service have the best food. <laughs> they do. That's a fact. Fact. But I'm saying, like, we expect <laughs> a lot from our people. We expect perfection from our people. And that's why I try not to beat us up too bad. But at some point in the game, we got to be accountable to each other. Because, sadly, Asia represents every black woman contractor. Yeah. Every single one. So, if a person has a bad experience with Asia, they'll say, that's why oh, I don't fuck them. with black folks. Mm -hmm. If they have a bad experience with me, that's why I don't do business with black folks. And just like, so you're going to crucify every black business owner. I see both person, sides, though. Yeah, I do, too. Because, uh... Although I, I believe I'm an awesome contractor, and there's it's some good contractors out here that ain't licensed, and there's some good ones out here that is, mm -hmm. and there's some bad ones out here that's licensed, and vice versa. Yeah. So it, it go both ways. So it's trial and error, huh? It really is. It's, it's just, trial and error. It's just how long is your pockets to get that trial and error and get it fast. We got to have these conversations, y'all. Because I'm a one-timer. What like, that mean? Like, something bad happened to me one time, I ain't doing that shit again. <laughs> I'm one time, one and done. I'm not doing it again with the same person. Because if I sit back and see other people doing it and they winning, then I'll just switch up. It's, it's kind of like uh, the black barbershop rule. Mm -hmm. Like, if you got a black barber, if you go to a black barbershop, and black people watching this, y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm like, I'm not a guy, so I don't. It works with the beauty, beauty shop, too. Okay. So, <laughs> tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. You go to the barbershop. Let's say you move to a new side of town. You go to that barbershop where they cut black hair, because it is a difference. And you get a guy who's cutting your hair, and then let's say you have a relationship with them, but you don't want to go to him anymore. What do you typically do? Just leave. You go to a totally different shop. Yeah, you just left and went to a new place. But you've literally bypassed the other six people in that shop because it's like there's a loyalty to that barber. And oh, yeah, y'all go together. Yeah, I go together, yeah, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's like, I remember, I'll never forget. Like, I think I, it's like that in construction a little bit, too. It is, huh? I think so, because I've seen clients go to other people, and, but then when they get burned, they come back to me. I was like, just come on back, baby. Like, you know this where home at? I remember when I moved to Plano, which is a suburb. It's kind of like, you know, y'all suburbs out there. Mm -hmm. And I went to this barbershop. It was only like two or three black barbershops in the whole area. And I went, and uh, I was driving back to my side of town, like 45 minutes every week to get a haircut. And I said, I'm just tired of driving to the hood. So I went to a black barbershop there and, you know, made the mistake of, you know, never go to the person that don't have no customers on a Saturday, right? For sure. <laughs> yeah. For sure. So the dude was like, hey, man, come on. You can come right here. And I was looking around. Everybody was like, they gave me a look like, nigga, don't sit down. But I sat down and, man, he so had he was my. he the entertainer in barbershop. Man, he had my hairline looking like the first drop on a roller coaster. You know what I'm talking about? And so I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so I left out, man. And then I came back the next week after my, you know, hair started growing. I waited two weeks, and I went back to the barbershop. I'm not driving. I'm not looking for another barbershop. Yeah. Like, I live in Plano. It's only one black, two black barbershops out here. I am not driving. So, I, for the first time in my life, I went back to the same barbershop. He said, hey, man, I'm going to cut you again. I was like, nah, I'm good, bro. I'm going to wait for somebody else. I came Tuesday and got his card. And so, I, I'm going to send an appointment. And that dude, mean mug, when I tell you, he, if looks could kill, I would have been dead. Okay. Because so, I broke the rule. But I got a question. Before you let this man cut you, women, typically, when we go to a new shop, we sit around and watch it was the a other Saturday, people. Man. You know how long I would have been watching? I'm, my hair ain't going to be crazy. <laughs> that's a fact. So, I'm going to sit there and watch, bring me some snacks. Let me and see how they got me. Hair. Okay, that's who I'm going to come back and go to. I'm going to tell you how they got me. They'll never tell you that that person can't cut in the barbershop. Like, all the other barbers will just be looking like, I'm like, hey, can somebody give me? They're like, yeah, my man can get you right here. Because, they're, you know, he's paying a booth fee and they're not going to. Right. So, they knew he couldn't cut. But they gave you the look and you didn't pay attention bro, to it. was a look. Saturday, bro. You know what a black barbershop is like on a Saturday. Would you morning. rather have a crazy cut or just go a couple more days with, with extra hair? Because you could always put a hat on. I took my, I couldn't at work. I couldn't oh, you at work. was in corporate. I was in corporate. Mm-hmm. And so I learned then, like, but what I'm saying, I'll have to say, like, for me, when I have a bad experience, I'll just go back and find the person that's winning. Like, if I know that Asia, if I go to Detroit, one, I know that I can't go to Detroit without calling you. I appreciate that. But <laughs> I've seen, and this ain't the shit on nobody, and don't say any names, because I know you're petty. Um, <laughs> I've seen people come to you, and then they try to circumvent you, circumvent you, I'm sorry, mm. and then everything goes to shit. I bust out laughing every time. You 
the, we're not gonna talk about. We this isn't the petty show. Oh, but sorry. what happens is that'd be a good name for a show though. I'm gonna figure something out. What happens is a lot of people try to circumvent you to cut corners and they'll try to use you, and then they feel some kind of way when you when shit don't go right and they want to come back, or they feel some kind of way when you want to tax them on the back end, or they feel some kind of way because you're charging them for your time. Mm-hmm. And I see that a lot too with us. Like we have to start respecting a person's craft. I think they have to respect the craft, the educate education they yeah. put in and the experience. Like I done made some hella mistakes. I just learn from them, you know, stuff like that. But you but, show them though. Yeah, I do show. I'm a solution person though, like because yeah. I don't like to just hear people complaining. Like, okay, what are you gonna do about? Because I'm only gonna keep hearing the same goddamn story a couple <laughs> more times. <laughs> so what are we gonna do? Because I got a net way on me. Book uh, Aquarius. <laughs> like I got a net way on me. Uh, you took a nap today for you got here, didn't you? I didn't get one today because I had a long stressful day traveling with Hawkeye. All right, let's 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 end it on that because she does have her dog here with her. So yeah. I ask this to every person that comes on my show. Mm-hmm. Uh, Asia, you can go back to 18-year-old Asia. You ever seen the movie Back to the Future? I love Part it. Two. You really? We I love all three of them. So, yeah. so that's my fa- one of my favorite movies. Part Two specifically when they go back to the when they go to the future future, like it's a you know. Like, oh yeah, with the comic book with the book and stuff. Okay, there you. I, yeah, hey, that's why I fool with you. So <laughs> you have a Biff moment. You can you get into the DeLorean. You go back to 2001. Uh, 2002 when you getting ready to go off to Jackson State when you finna hit the yard, mm-hmm. turn up. And you're walking down a long, dark hallway, and it's just you and 18, 19-year-old you. And you can give them the, the comic book. Like, what specifically would you tell yourself in that moment that would change your life today? Use your refund check to buy stocks on Amazon. Because back then, Amazon only sold books. Bruh! I swear I tell everybody this. You That's remember it was a college bookstore? Yeah. But I remember Amazon, yeah, because I, I used to buy my books from there. We all did. And I was like, you. I would have used my refund check for that. That's the first thing I would have did. I would have bought more uh, tech stocks, like Google stuff, because that was all just coming. But we didn't know. We didn't. And uh, I would have probably bought, um, probably would have bought some Nike and some Microsoft stock. Because mm. I would probably still be doing what I'm doing, but a whole lot more. <laughs> that Amazon play. I, I would have been paid off. We would have been paid off them because that's. I graduated high school 2001. Yeah, we graduated the same year. Yeah. So yeah. Now we've been at school 22 years. I went to my 20 year reunion. It was, Two years ago. Yeah, it was awesome. It was the same year. Remember, because I think I just met you the year I went to mine. Yeah, it was awesome, though. I still hung with my same crew. We still was talking shit about everybody. Ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing changed. <laughs> I was telling some kids I spoke at uh, an event a couple, this last this week, and I said, y'all realize that there hasn't been a day that's gone by this year, since probably since September last year, that I have not received a package from Amazon. And growing up as a kid, if we got two parcels from UPS a year, we were doing something. Because you didn't get parcels like yeah. that, right? I said, now... It's so normal now. It's so normal. When we were in college, Asia, Amazon was a bookstore. Mm-hmm. Like, you got your... You either went to the campus bookstore or you went on to this Amazon website. And they would have it to you in three to five days. So you could pay a little extra money to get it. Yep. And it was still cheaper doing that than going to the bookstore. Or renting your books. Okay. Another, another thing I would have did with my refund check... Mm, well, I actually did good with my refund because I should just pay my rent up for a year. Like, I ain't working. Yeah. <laughs> I just pay my rent up. Another thing I would tell my younger self is when a person shows you who they are the first time, believe it. My mom used to always tell me that, but you know, experiences, you have to learn the hard way. Definitely believe it. Male or woman. It could be say a friendship, that, say, say that again. relationship. Say that again. Say that again. When a person shows you who they are, believe it the first time, especially when they're drinking. Because a drum man or woman tells no tales. At least that's what I was always taught. Really? Mm-hmm. Because your true self going to come out when you either broke, angry, or drunk. Damn. Your true self comes out when you're broke, angry, or drunk. Yep. So, so as far as this is about to go so off topic, but the perfect example of that is dating. Like, so, like, men always try to <clears throat> impress me with money. Money don't do nothing for me. I got my own money. If you didn't have that money, who is that man? That's what I want to know. Because if you lost all that today, that's going to really be who you are. Because mm. some people, when they get money, they become who they really are. Or when they lose it, they, bec- they you show who they really are. Mm. So I, I definitely believe that. I've seen it. Friends, people I've dated in the past, I've seen it. I, money doesn't make you. It reveals who you are. Like, I don't think people understand that. Because like, I feel like I'm the same way I was when I was losing my condo. I had to move back home, which was a blessing. But me losing my condo was the best thing that ever happened to me. Really? Best thing. I remember Why? I was crying. Yeah. I was depressed. How, why'd you lose it? 
Uh, cause that's when the market started crashing, and then yeah, I lost right. my job. Uh, my mortgage, my condo was like sixty five thousand, so my mortgage was like five six hundred. My mom and sister had to co sign for me because uh, I worked on the highway as an independent contractor, so that looked risky. So I had to get strong co signers. So when the market crashed, uh, I ended up getting laid off from my highway job, and I found out like six, may, maybe a year in advance, so I was able to stack up my money and pay life to that year, but I couldn't make it no more. So it was like. Use my last three grand to pay this mortgage, or I'm gonna get this builder's license. I went and got my license. The hell with this mortgage, cause I know the law. In the state of Michigan, you have six months to put. I have six months to redeem myself. Then it goes through foreclosure. But if me and fifty other thousand people in foreclosure in the state, it's gonna take you about three, four years to That's get to fact. me. So I'm gonna take my time. That's a fact. I was in a condo, so you can't cut my water off. Mm-hmm. I didn't pay my uh, car note. This is not uh, financial advice, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know the law, so I was like, okay, before my credit take. A hit, let me refinance through a credit union because I can call Miss Ruby and them and tell them what's going on. That's a fact. And tell them what's going on. I can't Local call. banks, yeah. credit unions are the play. Please keep going. That's what I'm saying. I can call her or him and tell them what's going on. I can't call GM Financial gonna come get my shit. As soon as I park outside that garage, Miss Denson, nope. They gonna come get your shit and that's it. The credit union, they gonna take time. Uh The transmission on that car end up going out. I drove to Memphis. It went out there for the game. I left the car there. Got came flew home, got a new car because my credit ain't bad yet. It's still straight. And then the uh, credit union was like, "Well, where our car? Oh, it's in Memphis. Are you gonna bring it back? Uh, that is your car. I have fifteen more payments." <laughs> straight Detroit, straight Detroit. You see how that Detroit came out? He's actually get a lick on the ass. <laughs> they was like, "We can take you to court." I was like, "Oh, you thought they stopped making lawyers when they made yours?" <laughs> Okay, cool. So we went to court. We ended up selling for like fifteen hundred. But yeah, in summary, losing my condo was the best shit that ever happened to me. When my when I called my mama crying and finally told her what was going on, she was like, I knew something was wrong. She was like, Baby, don't you worry about a damn thing. Come home. My mom gave me that okay. Man, it was motherfuck this car, fuck this fuck because yeah. I was straight. And I could come home and really focus and go hard. My first year after losing my job, I made like hundred and fifty grand mm. from wholesaling and doing little small jobs. And I was like, Oh, this it. I ain't worked it'll be ten years this October since I worked. I've made more money through L's than I've ever made through a win. Yeah, you, you, you learn, learn from them. You learn from them. You learn exactly what not to do. That first flip, that was a nightmare flip. Taught you know me what not exactly to do again. Exactly what not to do. It mm-hmm. actually made me change up my, my position. Like, I stopped flipping after that. I flipped I, a couple more, but then I got into the buying home. I think my problem is that I trust people from the jump, and the only person that can ruin that is them. And that, that's something I really got to work on because I have such a big heart. I'm such a big giver. My family is like that, and I can get played like that. I've gotten played like that, but I don't. Mm-hmm. Look bad, I'm like shit. That's your luck, cause I'm that nigga. <laughs> and you and you let people know, like me, when a person screwed me over, I just I just sit up, I sit back, I play the long game. Like mm-hmm. my thing is, you know, um, I don't have to get my leg back. You know, uh, God to get get my leg back, or the universe, or the stars, whatever you subscribe to. And yeah, it's, it's such a better lick. And, I, and I'm one of those guys. I live by the mantra: You'll need me before I need you. Thanks. And so when a person needs me, when they fuck me over, I've had so many people come to me and apologize, like Tim. You know, I did I did some hoe ass shit. Um, That's real. At least they were able to apologize. But were you accepting of, the, of it? Oh, of course. I don't kick people when they're down. I used to. I used to feel like I used to feel the need to punish people. But I learned that the greatest punishment a person could ever have is to come to you and admit that they were wrong. And that takes years in some cases. Yeah. But it's 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 like why am I gonna lose sleep over some bitch ass shit? Like but that see, person is a bitch ass person either way go. I think, so last year was a really rough year for me because, like, three of my really good contractors, like, I don't know what they was dealing with, but it just went bad. No, I don't have no hard feelings no more, but I did at first because I never, I'm I'm real trustworthy, so I never thought this would ever happen to me because yeah. it's like, I do right by people. So it's like, when people do me wrong, I be taking that shit real Real personal, me too. Well, and cancel, I be trying you know, my best. Not how we are. We, you know, we like to say we're not emotional, but we take it personal. Like we, yeah. we, we want to get revenge. I be wanting to get revenge, but I'm gonna let God and Karma handle it because they gonna always come through. They and I'm beat just, your ass. Yeah. Like, there's no other way to put it. Like yeah, they gonna get. There's them. nothing that I could do to you that Karma won't take care of, and it's always sweeter. Like I've sat back and watched people suffer. Yeah, and I'm just like you know, <laughs> excellent. I'm, I'm Mr. Burns on the ass. It's like I didn't have to involve myself in that because I know me. And once I involve myself in it, and, you know, then that then it becomes a whole another thing. It's just like why would I put myself through? But I got clients burns? like that. They only call me uh, after they get burned because they used to use me in the past, and then they was like, "Oh, I can find it cheap." Okay, good luck to you. God bless. God speed. No, I, I don't never have hard feelings. If they you, always if, call you, don't they? 
I got one who always call. And he every time he texts me like, hey, you already know what time it is. I'm like, you know, I'm about to text your ass. He I like, all right, cool, me and that be that. He out of New York City. <laughs> I had a guy call me yesterday. <laughs> I love this dude. Love him. Um, he wanted to go to Cheap Route on something. Mm-hmm. And when I tell you he getting tax right now, to the point that where now the listing just got sold. The house was already in for, He was helping his, a, a relative out. Um, the house got sold. The lenders got switched. And mm-hmm. all the money that they were on the contract for one number. The new lender came back and made a bunch of other stuff do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they can do that. All the stuff that the first lender suppressed, the new lender said, no, we want our money. Damn. In the escrow period. Mm. They can do that. Damn. And so he's like, what should I do? And I'm like, well, first things first, man, I can't advise you because you already have a lot of real estate. <laughs> you know, some people say that's petty, but that's the law. I can't advise you. Mm, you know, because I would love to help you, yeah, however. Yeah. Yeah, I told him, I said, man, you know, I love you to death, brother, but you're you know, you're on the contract with another real estate broker, so unfortunately I can't advise you. I said, well, what you should do uh, what you should consider, I didn't say do, what you should consider is having a conversation with your real estate uh, agent about, um, you know, getting those fees reduced. And, you know, if in the event that you terminate that contract with them, I would love to help. But it's like. That was a very nice profession. Yeah, that was. A, that was I'm really proud of you. I ain't about to lose my, my livelihood because you chose to go to cheap route. And was I you love laugh, you. Was you laughing on the inside? Oh, me. Oh, me. Ah! But new me is like, I'm really that dude. You want to know why? Because. When you we, we we don't plant anymore. We don't plant yeah. seeds anymore. We want microwave shit. And I'm a planter. Mm-hmm. So I knew when I had the conversation with him two, three years ago about this that he wasn't gonna go with me. But it was just like, all right, we'll do what you gotta do. But eventually it's like a boomerang. Life so is that a, karma came back. It's a boomerang. Life is a boomerang. It always comes back. And then when it comes back, you get more business on the back end. What I've experienced, when you're humble and you say, It's all good, man. Like I can help you, but it has to be this way. Mm-hmm. And they typically always follow my way to the T after that. And it becomes a loyalty that can't be broken. But you know what I've learned? Okay, I've been licensed since 2012 and business since 2010. I was always the higher contractor amongst us because I charge like the white man. Mm-hmm. You want top quality work? I got top quality subs and that's what it comes with. License sure. I warranty all my work, all that good stuff. But I've learned that it's like that's Doing right all them years, it finally started paying off because then people started getting screwed. And then when people get screwed in Detroit, they know, like, hey, if you call Asia, she going to look out for it. She going to tax your ass. She going to charge you. But you ain't got to worry about your shit. And that gives me, like, a sigh of release. Like, damn, like, finally, like, y'all really starting to see, like, I ain't trying to, like, get over on y'all. But, you know, I got to pay myself and still make money, too, at the same time. It takes 10 times longer to prove your integrity work than it does to be on some fuck shit. Yeah. People naturally gravitate to the fuck shit. Yeah, because I, I got integrity in my whole team. got integrity. When my mama was still here, my biggest thing was like, I can't do bad because it's going to get to my mama and I'm going to get my ass thrown at me. Bruh. And my family big on do not ruin our name. Like, my family big on that. And my mom used to always tell us, you never know who know me, so you better go out Say. here and act like you got some damn sense. I'd be like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and you know the fun thing about and it? And it's true. It's, business it's and personal true. everything. It's... I don't know how it is in Detroit. In Dallas, if you're black and you about something, that circle is extremely small. Yeah. Uh, to the point where you see the same people yep. all the time. Especially if all y'all got integrity, that circle is even smaller. It's even smaller. Yep. I, I, you know, it's the 1% of the 1%. Mm-hmm. And so, man, listen, y'all. We got to wrap this shit up. We've been I here mean, forever. We, I can talk to like, you. We can literally talk for another hour. Um, I'm definitely going to have you back on. I hope you can make it out to the... Uh, to the documentary release, if you can, I'm coming to Detroit. But listen, yeah, uh, just uh, text. Oh yeah, I'm me. coming to Detroit. Yeah. I'm bullshitting. I'll be in Detroit. Uh, we picked a date in July, right? In July. Yeah, I think it was the end. I gotta look at my. Because you got phone. something going on in, in July. Yeah, I go. Uh, I'm Cancun. taking my, you I'm taking my little cousin. Shit. Look, I told my she little cousin. She finna go turn up. All that stuff we was no. talking about doing. Look, at she finna go spend that money. I'm taking my little cousin. So me and my little cousins got a deal. Every time they get good grades, we go, every summer we going somewhere. That's dope. Cause that's how my family did us. That's dope. Yep. So so my goal is to be in Detroit at the end of July. So hold me accountable to that. Uh, I'll be in St. Louis next week, and then I'm taking a break to promote the documentary, and then my next stop after St. Louis is going to be Detroit. I got to get Detroit while it's still a little bit warm. It's, it's about no, to warm up. It's, uh, it's like 65 to today, you know. That's a it's going to be like in the 90s next weekend for Grand Prix. It's going to be nice. It's supposed to be like in the, the high 80s, I think. Because come what? End of September is back cold, huh? Not all the way cold. Like, you can still do two hoodies as a coat to about Thanksgiving. By the way, it's the end of May here. Look what she has on. Buddy got on a whole. But the airport coat. was cold and stuff. So, and I didn't know if you was gonna have it cold in here because in Texas y'all be having the air on like below zero. Yeah, so, it'd be cold. Asia, where can they find you? 
Uh, my personal Instagram is Lady Contracts, but that page is all over the place. We want to laugh and get educated. I got you. Uh, the business page is Dense and Construct Serve, and TikTok is Lady Contractor. Okay, I'm gonna post everything in the show notes. Well, listen, uh, appreciate you, you guys. I, I want to bring people on here to have candid conversations. I'm tired of bullshitting and kind of dancing around topics that we need to address. Um, there needs to be a level of accountability and black people specifically need to be able to sit down and talk about some of the things that bother us, but also talk about the solution. And I bring people like Asia onto the show to talk about the solution. If you don't want to hear the solution then I'm not for you, I already told y'all before I'm for the 1% of the 1%, which is typically the people that get things done. There's 350 million people in this country at this time. 1% of that is 3.5 million. 1% of that is 35,000. If I can reach 35,000 people with my message, um, I'm good because I know that those are people that's going to do the work. And typically when you get into those circles, you think about doing a, a project in college, you have 10 people in a group, only two people doing the work and everybody else bullshitting. That was me. Hey, listen, I ain't going <laughs> to lie. I, I went back to school. Oh, so I was a dude that was always doing the work. But here's the thing, you guys, you don't have to convince your target audience. If you have to convince hey. someone uh, to do right, they're not your target audience. And I have gotten out the business of convincing the wrong people to do the right thing. I don't care what you think. Everything we talk about on this show is our experience. Asia probably ain't even seen the show before, but the shit she talked about today is literally what we've always talked about, which tells you I'm bringing people on here that's about that shit. So with that being said, I got to wrap up. Thank you so much. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe at No More OGs. Holla at your boy. Holla at your girl. We're going to see y'all later. Peace. We're about to get up out of here.